Today, I want to talk about a very mundane, but I feel important topic, which is documentation. Most of us will document using readme files, and readme files tend to go out of date. For example, here's a readme file, super simple one, and it says this code performs function A. Well, actually, in the code, it does perform function A, but as business grows, new functions are added, function B is added, function C is added, but because of time pressures, nobody bothers to update the readme. So it just says the code performs function A. Sometime later, the business evolves and function A is no longer relevant. So it is refactored out, but the readme still says the code performs function A. So the author of this readme is not trying to lie to you. It's just that time pressures prevents him from updating it. And eventually, over time, <coughs> readmes will lie to you. So what can we do about it? We need a code. We need a tool that can document the code itself. Now, of course, there is such a tool. Of course. Many tools, in fact. Go has GoDoc. C++ has Doxygen. Java has Javadoc. You name it. We've got tools there. However, of course, there's a however. But before the however, GoTalk is Go doc is a very useful tool so in order to get it into go uh, that's why i like go so much you enter one single command that command go get and you put the go bin in your path and you have go doc but now let's talk about what's the problem with go doc what are its limitations let's look at a typical main dot go it's called example godoc. Here's the main function. We have a private function here. It's private in Go because it starts with a lower case. And it calls a library function. Uh, library functions in Go are called packages. So this library function is called my package. Capital A function, that's a public function. And the implementation for this private function is here. So let's run GoDoc and let's see how it documents main.go and the library function. I'm just going to copy and paste into my terminal. My terminal is in here. Actually, I ran it already, but I'll do it again. So when I run that up, it's exposing on port 8080. And it's in module mode. Go has a very powerful module system. And 8080. Okay, it's the Go doc. I need to look for my package. So I do Control F to find it. I'm looking for my package, Suyin. GitHub, Suyin, this is today's presentation. And I'm looking at Example go doc. Let's see how well it is documented. Uh, I think something went wrong. Let me let me go back again. Reload by pressing F5. Okay, I've reloaded it. Let's look at go doc again. Oh, still empty. Well, actually, I expected it to be empty. It's not a demo hiccup. Uh so it doesn't document main.go. How about this, my package A function? Let's look at it. Go back. I have my package here. Package, my package. Mm, nice documentation. A function, click on it. Yay, it properly documents A function. So what have we just seen. Godoc does not document main functions at all. 
However, library functions, my package public function, capital A func, was properly documented. But this private function, A func, this one, I'll go back, this function with this implementation was not documented. Of course, you say, it's private and private functions should not be in the official documentations. Oh, okay, I'll take that for now. Uh, I've been looking at a lot of code bases recently, and I sometimes see this kind of main function. It normally comes about when people come to go from Node.js or some other framework where the framework just calls the framework main function, typically the app function. So anyway, I have function app uh, in here, it, and it calls in my package, I, I mean, and it calls two private functions. So let's look at the go doc for my package app. Let's go up. It's my package app. Hey, app implements the application. Uh, okay. Is that all? Hmm, that's not very satisfying. Ah, Godoc has a secret weapon. See this? I can see the source. Hey! Function app has private functions a func and b func, and they happen to be placeholders for now. Well, it's a convenience. It, <coughs> it prevents you from needing to call up your editor and dive into the code base itself, and it links to the code. Fine. Yeah, better than nothing, I guess. But it doesn't leave a very good feeling. Uh, the documentation doesn't seem right to me. So now I'm hearing in my mind all of you screaming, saying, of course, you need to expose public functions. Otherwise, it won't be documented. You haven't refactored your code. Yeah, you need to expose them as public functions. But I ask you, who, in honesty, on their first try, completely implements a main.go with package public functions? Most of us start by writing local private functions and then refactor. That's the and then refactor is a big problem. We're all in high stress jobs, high speed jobs. When do we refactor? Big question. So sometimes to make your intent clear, you need to document your implementation details. In other words, your private functions. And as you can see, GoDoc will not show you private functions unless you dig into the code. What can we do about this very depressing situation? I thought about it for a while. And here is what I'm thinking. In order for documentation to be useful, our documentation intent must coincide, must be expressible by your code implementation. One example of this practice is Jupyter Notebooks. Let me show you a Jupyter Notebook. This is a Jupyter Notebook. As you can see, this is documentation. It's got text, it's got links, and it's got code, implementation code here. The structure of the document, your documentation intent, and the code is all in one place. It's all documented at the same time in one place. But Go is not a notebook language. Neither is 
Node.js, neither is Java, neither are most traditional languages. Instead, Go code implementation is spread over multiple source files, tens of source files, or even hundreds of source files, perhaps in multiple folders or subdirectories, and each of them with readmes that will eventually lie to you. So how do we make Go to implementation more like Jupyter Notebook style documentation? We need to link intent, our documentation intent, with the code implementation. So what if you can have a product that can pull in the implementation? You decide what you want to document, the sequence of how you want to document it, and then let the code speak for itself. Good news. This tool exists today, right now. In fact, you are looking at it. It's called Go Present. Let's talk about Go Present. Go Present is a Go tool, so you need Go. Just download Go. It's a straightforward install. Then as in go doc, go get, go present. That's the command. And include it in your path, something like this, and run it. Normally, you just type present. But because I'm running my presentation inside the container, I have to do this extra incantation. And I've actually already run it. Let me show you this thing over here. Yeah, lots of warnings. Uh, I have to run it, otherwise you don't see this slide presentation. So Go Present has two personalities. The slide personality or the slide format, which is what you're seeing now. It presents information in slides, in chunks, where you can go forward and you can go backward and you can go forward again. And more relevant to my topic today, it can present your code in a long-form article format. And I've written such an article. It's called My Doc Article. Let's click on this link. Ha! Huh. Let's go through this, shall we? Documenting with intent and implementation by me, of course. <laughs> so, Command example Godoc shows Godoc's failure to document main functions. This is my documentation intent. And this thing, I did not type it in. It is pulled from the source code itself. But notice there's no import, there's no package main. It shows only what I feel is relevant to show. So it doesn't clutter my documentation. Not like diving into the source code itself, where you have to hunt for things. Now, obviously, when somebody reads this, ha, huh, I've got this A func, seems important. It's a private function. Hey, it's down here. Okay, and what does it do? Oh, it does that. And there's also this my package, capital A func. Uh, I don't have to switch tabs. I don't have to click on links. Why? Uh, I don't have to go to GoDoc. Why? Because it's right down here. I intend to document it. So my package a func is down here and it does that. And again, this is directly from the code. So my second intention was for my second example. That's why it's two. Uh, it makes clear what my package dot app does. Okay, I've got this funny main function and all it does is call my package dot app, but straight Forwardly down here, my package.app does these two things. And those two things are shown here. The beautiful thing about the article format is it gives you a table of contents which is clickable for free. Let's look at a funk. Boom, a funk is here. Very nice. I love it. This has actually been put forward together with slides since the very beginning of this tool. But nobody has used it for code walkthrough documentation like this, other than the Go authors themselves. 
So I learned from the geniuses who wrote Go. Now let's talk about testable documentation. Uh, how can we test our documentation? Well, the Python guy says there's this thing called doc test. Uh, I'm not talking about this. Uh, actually, I'm talking about code getting refactored all the time. Well, at least code should get refactored all the time. And a very, very powerful refactoring technique is to rename functions to better reflect their intent. So let's go and rename a func to something, well, I hope clearer, uh, a function. And it's uh, in example, go doc, main, etc. So let's go to my editor. Uh, example, go doc. Yeah, there it is. Uh, let me turn on numbers. Uh, what was I supposed to rename? A func. Okay. So I go to the A func. Go rename. What do I want to rename it to? Function. Okay. Enter. It does its stuff. Notice something. The comment also got renamed. And this got renamed. Let's see whether it builds. Go build. It's good. Let's see whether it tests. It's good. Well done. We have properly refactored our function. Now, let's go back to our article. Everything's still okay, but still a func. Oh, I need to refresh. Press F5 on my browser for refresh. Bang! Something went wrong. My article is broken. Okay. Let's look under the hood at the source. Okay. Let's go back here. Oh, sorry for flipping back and forth so much. It says my doc article line 10. Let's, let's look at that now. My doc article, I turn on numbers again. Line 10. Okay, line 10 is here. So now you can see the power of the article format. This is a header. It looks like Markdown, and it pulls in the code with it using this directive, dot .code directive. And it's pulling in from that file, and it's looking for start of line, function, ah, function followed by a closing opening bracket. So if this regular expression fails, this article will not render. Ah, that's the problem. So, okay, let's go back. Uh, uh, I'll refactor this back. Go rename. Back to a func. Yeah, it's now refactored back to a func. Now I press F5 on my browser yeah, and it's back. So, that is actually how we can test our documentation. When key function names change, our article, or I like to call it my code walkthrough, will fail. So the code walkthrough will fail, and it forces me to either fix my function or, more often, fix my documentation. It forces me to update my documentation because it failed the test. Good. So we've reverted the name and it works again. And we have seen under the hood. So the Go present source is essentially an extended version of Markdown. Uh, it's actually Markdown with some extra commands. You have already seen this command. Uh, it's the code directive. It pulls in the file name. There's a start regular expression and an end regular expression. There's also something super powerful for Go code. Actually, it's not only for Go code, but for Go code, you can just say play the name of the Go file, start and end. 
and you will actually execute that code in your presentation or in your article or in your code walkthrough in line and you can edit it as well and change variables extremely powerful but i want to say this is not only for go code filename.co go can be replaced by any executable and it will work similarly this file need not only be for go code it can be for any source code notice i just say file name and not file name.go can be for any source file we like images we like pictures so we can pull in pngs we can pull in jpegs we can even pull in movies if you want to and we can specify the height and the width and we can default to a maximum screen height etc and finally in my next slide we can demonstrate the use of links well this is a link you can click on it and you can get the slide and the my doc within uh, by clicking on it within the slide itself and lastly a plug for my current employer Zendit is hiring if any of you are interested in working in exciting Go projects uh, please send in your application and your resume to this email address and mention the two teams I'm managing ops automation we automate operations and engineering operations and that brings me to the end of my talk. Have you ever okay. tried this on other uh, non-go uh, code bases? Really? Yeah, actually, uh, it works on any source code base. Um, it works on TypeScript. It works on Node.js. Uh, the code, the code uh, directive will pull in any source file. It doesn't even have to be a source file. It could even be a readme file. So the people who wrote Go Present, uh, okay. well, most people use it for presentations. But uh, there's the second personality, which I think is underused. Uh, and that is the article format, which is excellent for code walkthroughs and excellent for uh, this kind of documentation. Uh, Jupyter notebook style documentation, I like to call it. Yeah. Well, anyway. Okay. I hope you learned something useful and uh, I enjoyed presenting.